Okay. Well, hello and welcome to Tea Talk. I'm so glad to see you. As I told you last week, we're going to come to you this week with something very special. You all know that it is Thanksgiving time and you can see behind me, I've got my pumpkins ready. Even though from East Texas, we don't eat pumpkin pie, but I've got a chef on here. I'm going to ask him about what to do with these pumpkins here that I got when I took a little fun event we went to and they gave me these pumpkins. I said, let me take them home. But now what, what do I do with them? So I am just so excited uh, to have Bruce here and, and uh, a lot of you will know him from Sweetie Pies, and he is a professional uh, cook. Show, uh, what do you call it? Um, I say cook, but there's another word: culinary arts. Yeah. What do you call it, Bruce? Extraordinaire. <laughs> culinary extraordinaire. <laughs> there you go. It just simply means he can show cook, and he's been to school to cook. He got experience in cooking. And uh, he cooks professionally for more than just his family. You know, sometimes our family will tell us, oh, mom, that was good because they want you to keep cooking, right? Okay. Uh, but you don't cook for anybody else. But he cooks multiple dishes and is experienced in all areas. So I have asked him to come and talk to us today. I want you to get to know him, uh, know his family, where he's from and everything. So, uh, well, so anyway, go ahead and tell somebody right now, get on and cook. You got to see Bruce from Sweetie Pies. He's going to be cooking a dish for us and talking about Thanksgiving, how he does it around his house, how he grew up and giving us some tips. Tips. Make sure if you have any questions, put your questions in the chat so that he can get back with you and answer or just to say hi to him and welcome him to, to Tea Talk, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the professional, the chef extraordinaire, Mr. Bruce from Sweetie Pies. Come on on, Mr. Bruce, and uh, say hello to Tea Talk. Good evening, good, well, good afternoon, I said good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm so everywhere, I mean, sometimes I lose track of time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you You travel all over the place cooking, don't you? Oh, man, I, oh. I can't even talk a lady. I don't know. Sometimes I get up, I'm like, okay, what state I'm in? <laughs> <laughs> I, I be, yeah. You know, I just be, you know, it's just one of those them callings that, that, that God has called me to do. And this this is one of the things where I just enjoy doing this cooking. You know, it just it, well, it, tell it, me about that. Did you start off cooking as a child? Where did you get this passion from? Well, um, this is the story. Okay. I used to be in the kitchen all the time with my mom when I was little, but uh I was one of those bad boys, so I uh, got in a little trouble. So uh -oh. I was, I went, I, I, yeah, I know, right? So I was, uh, was incarcerated for ten years. Uh huh. So in that, I was thinking like, okay, what is I gonna do when I get out? You know, uh, that's, you know, I'm gonna have them be a felony, but something that's going to be around for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had a choice between uh, um, cooking and uh, uh, working on cars. Okay. Now, you know, I, I get my hands and stuff, you know, my nails and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that all up under your fingers just wasn't sounding too good, huh? It sounded too good, you know what I mean? And I was like, hold on, baby. So I started looking at the salaries. I'm like, okay, car repair, cooking. I can do a shop where I can make the same as cooking, but you can do the side hustle and you can make it. And I said, I can do catering and make it even more. Okay, cooking it is. Okay. <laughs> So, so was your mom or your grandmother, uh, what did you learn how to cook? Well, uh, my mom always taught me how to cook because I was always in the kitchen with her. And then um, I went to school, I went to culinary school um, and it taught me a whole bunch of things about like reading recipes and stuff like that. So I took that to heart. And then um, when I came home from prison, I landed a job with Sweetie Pie, okay. uh, which was back then, it was like 2010. I believe uh, when I started working with them and I started off as just serving tables, mm -hmm. but I had that cooking knowledge that I had as well. Um, and I came home in March of 2010. I started with them like in June, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe 2010. I never get it. it was March 19th, 2010 when I came home. And wow. um, So and what I, was that like? So how did you, how did you find out about Sweetie Pies? Well, uh, me and Tim was uh, uh, um, incarcerated together. Uh -huh. So you know, his mom had a restaurant and stuff like that. And then if I need a job, look him up when I come home. But you know, you know, guys in prison, they just be talking. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't right. know, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I ain't gonna buy that. So when I came home, 
I never, I didn't call him right off. You know what I mean? Uh, and then we wind up bumping to each other like at a gas station or something. And he's like, man, you out? You ain't called me in this now? I said, man, man, I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna be like one of the other guys. I was gonna try to find my own way. Right. And uh, he like, man, come by the restaurant and see me. So I came by the restaurant and it, it took off from there. Wow, what a blessing. And that, is, that just makes my heart warm because um, so many people um, do find themselves incarcerated or in a little trouble, whatever. And uh, when they come out, you know, sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. But I think the moral of that story is, you know, do connect with other people, do reach out. But also um, that Sweetie Pie would give you a, an opportunity. But I see that her son or grandson, you know, had been in some trouble. So she understood that just because you've been behind bars does not mean that you are, uh, you know, no good You for anything. There's a lot of good in everybody. So exactly. I'm glad she gave you an opportunity. <laughs> And that was her motto. That was Miss Robert's motto, you know, uh, giving people second chances. Now, before, when I started there, the, it was no show or nothing like that. When oh. I initially started, it wasn't, all this stuff came after the fact. We, we wasn't, I didn't come in, I was a, a regular server, on a, wiping off tables, serving people. It wasn't, I came home and bam, we was on the reality TV show. No. Oh, okay. So, so you were serving, you know, at the tables in a restaurant facility somewhere. And then they came in and made them a show, and you were you were there a part already part of the family. Already part of the family. So I started just you know being having little scenes with acting on a uh, 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 as a funny server, you know, uh, and then I wound up moving up to a floor manager, to um, uh, the restaurant manager. Well, yeah, the restaurant manager, and then now they want to start expanding, so. We wound up opening up another couple more stores in St. Louis, and then we went to California. Then we went to uh, Memphis, and yeah. then uh, uh, Texas, which you right. know, I, I, and that's I, how you got to Texas, <laughs> right? Yeah, we went to Texas, and then uh, Mississippi, and Mississippi. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're happy that you have um, found your home in Texas here. We really uh -huh. enjoyed having you at first met and cooking in culinary. I see you got your culinary uniform on there, your apron. Come on, you know, you know, I, I keep this. It take everywhere I go. <laughs> well, I go. yeah, well, you have certainly been a blessing to us. So tell us about your family. Well, like I say, uh, I, I'm, I'm married. I've been married whew, for 20, 22 years now. Wonderful. Uh, and you know, my wife, when I came home, she's like, are you sure you want to do this? You sure? I'm like, listen. It's gonna, it's gonna make it happen. We're gonna do good in it. Yeah. Hey, this, this is where we gotta go. So she was kind of, you know, like, are you sure? Cause we moved from St. Louis to California. Right. And then we was out there in California for like four years, I think. Yeah, wow. four, four years, we was out there in California. I couldn't wait to leave. Oh, Lord have mercy. I know California is a different place. My daughter lives mm -hmm. out there. I could not live out there. I mean, it's a nice place to visit, but. So I tell people, you know, most people like, why you move California so nice? Uh, if you look at my bills from, from now and you look at my bills where I was in California, you understand why. <laughs> right. Yeah, because people come down here and they sell the house in California, come down here and pay cash for a house yeah. and get a house two or three times bigger than what they had. So, exactly. yeah, it's, it's, it's a high, high dollar up there in California. Like I say, you, you want to go up there and give all your money away, then go right here. Now, I go for vacation. Okay. Go, and I come right back. <laughs> <laughs> and come on back home. To back home. <laughs> well, good, good, good. Well, we are so happy that you're here and that you're still doing what God gave you, the blessing that he gave you to use your hands uh, to, to gain your wealth. And then also, I think I like it because you use your hands also to serve. And I just believe that God is going to continue to bless your hands even more because you are, you have a servant's heart, but you have a gift and a talent with your hands. So, um, uh, we've been out with COVID, but we know that you're coming back to First Met and uh, going to be cooking breakfast there and some things. And we're, we've are we been talking about getting some things together uh, that he can cook some dinners and things for people at First Met. So we got some things in mind. So don't, don't, y'all got to come over to First Met and, and taste his cooking and get to meet him personally. But listen, I see, go ahead. And then like I said, you know, my, my children, you know, I, I, have, I have four children. And now I just have my fifth grandchild. And people are like, you got five grandbabies? I'm like, yeah, I just looked as good. You know? <laughs> know that's right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I just had my, my fifth grandchild uh, last month. Wow. Like, yeah. 
So I got uh, my oldest daughter, Jasmine, mm -hmm. and then uh, Ronald, we, we call him Jay. That's my son. He's he's right under her. And then Brandy is right under Jay. Mm -hmm. And then Jada is the baby, you know. Right. Uh, and then Jaden, Ava, Brooke, Maya, and, and Jay. Yeah. Go ahead, all. Go ahead, all. You have a blessed man. And I know your wife was there a little bit earlier. Is she still there? She can say hello. She's such yeah, a sweet lady. She pop in. Uh, Miss George, she, she in there. I don't know. Okay. Oh, Tell whenever she get a minute, just say hello to the audience, okay? Right. Right. <laughs> Let y'all yeah, know this because, you know, I really believe that uh, men are really, God called them to lead, but he always gives them a beautiful, strong woman to help them fulfill their dreams and aspirations. So I just wanted to honor her because I know it's hard, you know, coming out, getting restarted. You need somebody to believe in you and not only believe in you, but to help you. <laughs> and, right. and look here, and Pastor would appreciate this and to put up with you, <laughs> you know, while you try to figure it out. And the thing is like this here, where it was hard. I mean, I'm gone for 10 years and she managed everything, made sure she got the kids, got them up there and visit. You know, and I, I just like I said, I take my head off to it because, you know, you, you, a lot of women won't do that. Yeah, they be women, gone. You know, the, the minute you, you you get sense of time, they're gone. Yeah. You know? But yeah. Uh, I was blessed, you know what I'm saying? God blessed us where he kept us strong, kept us together. Yeah. You know? And I, I just thank God every day. That, well, good. Because uh, she is she is a, a strong, amazing woman. She deserves all of her accolade, and that's why I wanted her just to come on and, and for the people to see her, because um, you know we want to honor her for what she has done to keep this family together. Because Thanksgiving is all about family, exactly. and usually in the black home, it's usually the black woman that you know plays a really big part in Thanksgiving whether it's the cooking or getting people together or feeding people, loving on people. But uh, that's not always true in every case. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of men who stepped up who can cook. And so, so we wanted to just kind of honor you today, the, the, the chef, the man that's going to be cooking. So tell mm -hmm. us about Thanksgiving. And, you know, whenever your wife gets a chance to pop in, that'll be good. But what are you cooking? I see you over there in the kitchen. Tell me about what you're cooking. Well, right now, you know, you know it's just like every day, every day in the house, these they. Daddy, what you cooking, though? Uh, babe, what you cooking? So today, I mean, I just uh, decided to cook just a little something, you know, some cornbread. And some some, some. Okay, what you got? A little something, something over there in the cornbread. Uh, you know, the cornbread about to come out of the oven. I got the, see, this is homemade scratch cornbread. So Ooh. I don't know if y'all see that or not, but it's kind of hot, you know. Mm. We got the homemade cornbread. Okay. And this, this is made with love, and it's made with scratch, too. So uh, Okay. You know, yeah. I have to admit, I don't use homemade anymore. I, my mother taught me how to make homemade cornbread because it's what we made. Now yeah. I go with Jiffy. Yeah, I, I just know you make everything from scratch. Just, just a little something, just, you know, because we don't eat out that much. Oh, what is that? That's baked chicken? Baked chicken, yeah. Whoa. This is baked chicken. That and looks listen, good. Hey, listen, one thing about it is, when you up, when you up in here, you're going to eat. People come over to my house, man, what are you cooking? Whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> you know. Well, let's this talk about a Thanksgiving meal because, uh, you know, and I was telling you earlier how in East Texas, we grew up not poor because my grandfather was a farmer. So we had all the vegetables and right. food that we needed. It, we just didn't have a lot of cash money, but, so, but we never went hungry. But one of the things that we did not eat, we did not eat a lot of turkey as I remember, we ate what um, we call a hen. Okay. Uh, so if you're in the chat room, you know what a hen is, let me know, hit me up in the chat room. Uh, and so we don't have to have turkey for Thanksgiving. Tell us about how people are cooking now, because I see you're having chicken here. Could you have chicken on a Thanksgiving? Was this something you would serve on a Thanksgiving day? Well, this was, this, yeah, this is something like, without, in our household, it's like, we cook this stuff every, every day is Thanksgiving for us. You know, we look at it like, Every day is a holiday in our house, in our mm -hmm. household. You know, we are blessed. We wake up. God bless us to wake up every morning. It's a holiday. Right. So if we feel like cooking turkey on, on 4th of July, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't necessarily have, uh, like, special days that we cook because, like I say, this is what we do all the time, you know. Right. 
Now, let me ask you this, okay, because I see those seasonings behind and it's Thanksgiving, and I want to see if I can get a couple of your tips. (laughs) You know, uh, one of them specifically for pumpkin pie, because I'm going to have to make a pumpkin pumpkin pie here. I see you a pumpkin. Yeah, I'm going to have to make pumpkin pie. Do you have a specific recipe? Have you ever cooked pumpkin pie? Well, I never did pumpkin pie. I always did sweet potato. Tell us about sweet potato pie then, because I I heard that you can do the same thing for pumpkin pie that you do sweet potato pie. Do you think? Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just instead of using your sweet potato, the recipe is pretty much the same. You got your nutmeg, you got your cinnamon, you got your, your butter, your margarine. Everything is, is the same. Instead, you use sweet potato. You just use a pumpkin. You so know? okay. So give us some tips about your sweet potato pies uh, uh, that you've made. So how do you make your sweet potato pies? Can you give us the recipe? Is that is that a secret? I, I give y'all a recipe. Okay. So okay. Get, oh, wait a minute. Okay. Go ahead. Give us <laughs> y'all get y'all's pens. Get your so pens yeah, right quick. Now, I go to the store and get these type of crust. Now, so let me that's get okay. Some. That's where I'm going. I go to the same place. Let me show, let me I don't show. have time. My mama used to roll that dough out and cut it and pinch oh. it and stuff like that. I don't have time to do all that. See, this, see that's why I do. I, so I go to the store and I buy these. Okay, I got right. you. Mm-hmm. And these right here, I rolls them out. And uh-huh. this I make my crust and stuff like right. that. Put it in the oven, let it let it, let it it brown. I make my, my mixture. Uh, so my, you, wait a minute, you see, this is something that you my mom used to do, but my mother-in-law didn't do this. They didn't bake their crust, pie crust before. So sometimes it'll be kind of gummy, I would think, to me. Yes. So you do bake your pie crust before you put the filling in. Almost oh, definitely, most definitely. Because okay. it give, it'll give that crust that, that, that crunchy flavor. That's, you know, exactly. Anchor. Instead you know, so of when you gummy. Cut it, when you cut it, you got like a, a, a crust coming up, not something that's, that's gummy. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. this is so you bake your crust. Bake and bake the rest of the just get all my feelings. Uh-huh. I, I, you know, my uh, my sweet potato. What you find your feeling? We got to know what to put in the feeling now. Okay, you got you got sweet potatoes, but I got sweet potatoes in the oven. Okay, so, you got sweet potatoes. So you bake your sweet potatoes in the oven? I bake them in the oven. I don't put them on stove top. Yeah, see, see, that's what Mama Pat used to do. She said, don't put them on the top and boil them. You boil all the flavor out of them. Just yeah. put them in the oven and let them bake till they get soft. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I got them. And you turn them up too. When you put them on the stove top, because people constantly stir them. Uh huh. I don't do that. I put them in the oven, and they come out looking like looking just like that. So I wanted to have it on there because, like I said, I love sweet potatoes. Is one of my favorite vegetables to cook. Uh huh. Because this is I love my grandkids. They love my daughter. She really loves. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when she was pregnant with my grandson, she used to come up to sweet pies. And I used to fix her some fried chicken, some sweet potatoes, and a uh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So did, do you have the foil paper over those sweet potatoes? Y'all have a foil over it. Oh, that's a little secret, y'all. Keep the moisture in. Is that right? Because I never, I never covered my sweet potatoes. I think he's frozen. He's going to come back in a minute, okay. y'all. Hold on. Oh, there he goes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so when you cook them like this, they come out, I'm talking about, they come out hard. Uh, you got to wash it off so you come and say hi. Wash it okay. Off. <laughs> I want you to come say hi when you get the, when you get pretty, okay? <laughs> so you put water in those sweet potatoes and cover them up and like instead of boiling them on the stove, you're cooking them in the juice. How much water did you put in there? This is probably like about maybe... I would say maybe a half a, a half a quart of, of water. And I'll so put, you, cover, you cover the sweet potatoes up? Yeah, you cover them up just a little bit. You with the water. With water. But and then you throw them on. I mix my sugar, my vanilla flavor, um, uh, my cinnamon, my nutmeg. I mix all that in the, in the water when I mix it. What? I put it on top and then I put my butter and margarine in here as well. And I just let it bake. So wait a minute now. So it's in there cinnamon, nutmeg, yes, butter. Cinnamon, nutmeg, butter, margarine, and vanilla extract. Okay. What kind of sugar do you put in there? PNH. What? PNH. That pure C. That's how they turn out, you know. Oh. <laughs> I just put regular sugar, not brown sugar. I put regular sugar in here. You put white sugar. Okay. White sugar. 
um, like say I can, it just depends on, on how many people I'm cooking for. Like this, this small dish right here, we did probably like maybe three cups of sugar, mm -hmm. uh, a stick of margarine, a stick of butter. Um, oh, you do, you use margarine and butter? Yeah, I do margarine and butter because you know, margarine, margarine don't have, I mean, butter really don't have a, a, a taste. Okay. The I have the taste, so that's what brings out the flavor in the the butter is the margarine. Oh, we learning, we learning. So oh, you got yeah. cinnamon nutmeg. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you're gonna bake that till it's it's um the the potatoes are soft. Yeah. And then when you get ready to make your sweet potato pies, I just put this in a uh, a blender and and then just blend it all up. Because okay. it's already cooked. So it's like sweet potato. So I put it all in the blender, have the pies separate, and then just scoop the filling off and put it right in the pies and put them in the oven. Let me ask you this, because some people put eggs in there. Do you put eggs in there? Um, yeah, I add, I add some eggs to it. When Once I blend it up, I add eggs to it. About two eggs or what, four? About two eggs. Two eggs is good enough. That way it can stick together. Eggs, eggs what what coincide what makes things um come together come together okay okay so you got your eggs in there you know something else somebody said to put in there cream milk like uh condensed milk or either pet milk i use, I use uh evaporated milk okay yeah evaporated milk it's always good okay all right. okay but no uh what's that other kind of milk that uh, uh condensed milk condensed. Uh, no, I don't use that. I use evaporated milk. I would think condensed milk would be too sweet, but some people say they put it in there. And then you just put it in there and bake it. I'm, okay, okay, I got me a you recipe. Put, you put it in the oven and, and, and bake your pies for like 15, because everything's already done. Uh -huh. You just want to get that, that, that brown is on top um, of, of the pie. So yeah. every, your fill is already done, your crust is already done. You just want to get it together. And then just bake it for like 15, 20 minutes and your pie is ready. All right, all right, okay, good, good, good. We got that recipe. So I can do the same thing with my pumpkins. I just scoop the seeds out and 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 uh, put the pumpkin in the pan. Same way. Put all this, I'm gonna I'm make pumpkin pie. I'm gonna let you know because, how. I, because like I say, with pumpkin pie, it, it you just you just, you just do it for us with your flavor, how you uh -huh. want it to taste, and that's it. And then once you get that that your feeling to how your taste is, and then just put it in your crust, and put it in the oven. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I think it's gonna be a little project my grandkids and I do together. There you go. So we're gonna do that. Okay. Now the next one that people love, there's three things: macaroni and cheese. Do you have an easy recipe for macaroni and cheese? Yeah, I like I say I cook. I wish I had cooked some day, but it, it's just us. My daughter, she's going to Arizona, so my other daughter, she at work. Uh, so it's like it was just us. We cooking for it. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a no. Nah, they're gonna be back tonight. I should have made some macaroni, but. Well, you're gonna have to make some product for Thanksgiving anyway, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I ain't fixing it because we're gonna fix some next week. <laughs> okay. uh, and like I say, I normally fix a nice size pan of it. Um, uh -huh. And like I say, I, I just do, I do pasta. I do like four different cheeses um, with my mac and cheese. Um, milk, eggs. I use milk and eggs. Um, what else? Uh, sour cream. I put sour oh. cream in the mac and cheese. Sour uh, cream? Oh wow! How much sour cream you put in there? Well, like it's just like like a scoop, a uh, uh, spoonful. Okay. I put a spoonful of my uh, sour cream. I whip it up. I mix um, um, regular milk and evaporated milk together. Uh huh. Along with my eggs, and I put my sour cream in there uh, with my salt, my black pepper. My I put a little sugar in there. My 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 macaroni don't be sweet, sweet, but it it have like a little sweet taste to a little it. Sweet, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I mix it, I, I you know, cook the noodles and I put, you know, chop my butter, my margarine, my Velveeta, uh, and I mix all the cheeses and everything up together. Yeah. And then I put everything in, put it in, I put it in one of these little dishes. I got, I got plenty of dishes around here, let me see. Yeah, I got plenty of dishes around here, let me see. But it'd be a big one. It'd be a big one in there. Okay, yeah, kind of deep dish, like. A deep dish, but it'd be a little wider. Mm -hmm. And then put everything in there, put some cheese on top of it. And I stick in the oven about 45 minutes. Right. Now, when you said the different four cheeses, is, are they slices of cheese or is it like uh, shredded cheese? Well, I do. I do Velveeta. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I cut the Velveeta up to like little, little blocks. Uh 
Uh-huh. And then I do uh, Monterey Jack and uh, uh, Kobe. Uh -huh. And then I do sharp cheddar. So yeah. I mix all those cheeses up together. And then I put like a, a, a shredded cheese on top of it. Okay. So therefore, when it's baking, that shredded cheese, uh, it, 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 it got that brown golden look. And then that's how I yeah. know I'm not Ooh, you <laughs> that's your mouth. <laughs> know, right? yeah, You're I, making I, me I get cook, ready for Thanksgiving. Cook right here. Yeah, I got the table out back already. So we got a we got a um a big old prep table now. So now you know how you know we, we, your, your kitchen be limited, like where you right. want to cook stuff at. But nah, not no more. We got a big old prep table now. So you got a separate room where you actually do your prepping that's got a prep table in it. Uh-oh, I think you froze again. He'll come back in a minute. There you go. Go ahead. You froze for a minute. Go ahead. Okay, there you go. There you go. Uh-huh. So uh, is it prep table? Like, did you set it up like in your garage somewhere? You have a special room? Because I know you cater as yeah. well. No, I bring it in house. So anytime I do the catering, I just bring it, bring it in house. That way I can have you know, a space where like, I'm in a regular kitchen. So right. I bring it in. And I sit right on the other side of where I'm sitting at. Uh -huh. I just mix everything. Take it out. It. Yeah. It's more easy. So tell me too, do you do you cater any for Thanksgiving? Or do you, some people, my mom used to make pies and cakes. And people would order pies and cakes galore for Thanksgiving. Because they didn't want to bake. And I, you know, so do you do, you do any catering right now? Last year, I did a whole bunch of catering. Uh, and it's just, I didn't put nothing out there this year because I'm being back and forth out of time. And and I know I said this time I'm, I'm going to be in town, but I didn't want to do a whole lot of cake like I did last year because I want to sit down and enjoy things. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Because the thing is where I get a, a lot of people calling, uh, want this, want this. And then, I mean, I'm limited. Now, when I was in the restaurant, I had limited space. Right, right. You got people, they want a fried turkey, they want a ham, they want, they want fish, they want that. And I'm like, oh, where, where I'm cooking all that stuff at? <laughs> I know, I know, right? And your, your wife probably saying, look, you're going to need to get this stuff out of here. I need to have my Thanksgiving. What about our family? So, you know, and that's one of the things that... We had, I was trying to cook our meal and I was trying to do all the catering. Yeah. And then now we was behind eating because I was trying to get everybody else stuff out. Oh, that's not going to work right there. <laughs> Somebody going to be upset. Yeah, this, but this you know, one ahead. thing, yeah, I was telling about my aunt, my great aunt, and she had a whole bunch of children. And when we went, went for Thanksgiving, everything was ready. I'll be thinking like, how in the world she do this? But she would start baking like two or three weeks out and putting stuff in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And so the week of, she was pretty much taking things out, letting them thaw out or putting them in the oven. And so that's how, so I got to start doing that. And probably that might be something too, is if you d decide to do it next year, maybe we can kind of do it earlier um, you know, I was telling you about, you know, you coming back to first met and we start trying to do some things there, working right. up small and then working up, maybe this time next year, you'd be done cooked up a whole bunch of stuff in a deep freeze somewhere. You can just pull it out and ring it up. Cha-ching. And, and that was, that was, that's the thing. It's just all about your space. Uh -huh. um, when you're doing this catering, you, you want, you want everybody to have fresh stuff and right. yet you, you, you don't have a space for it. Like my house, I, I don't have a space for uh, uh, I want to store 15 macaronis or exactly because like I said, I could prep all the stuff up, like you say, prep all yeah. of it up and then just put it in the oven. Then what but, you gonna do? You got to keep it frozen and fresh until the person comes to get it. Well, yeah. I just see that in the future. I just uh, see that God has something greater for you, and uh, we're gonna be talking further. So we'll um, have to have you back on another time as we progress into what God is doing for you in this new season. I'm going to call it a new season uh, that uh, you'll be able to have all of that uh, and um, also be able to take your rest with your family on Thanksgiving and not being in a little kitchen trying to get everybody else served and, you know, your stuff is late. Cause I'm talking about last year I had my whole counter laid out with macaroni, greens. Um, somebody wanted, because they would just order uh, sides, really. Yeah, yeah, because they got the other big stuff. Yeah, we got the other big stuff. So I was cooking like the big old pots of greens. I had like 10 macaronis, um, sweet potatoes. I had, so I'm pulling stuff out of the oven, putting it in. 
pulling out with me. <laughs> that that <laughs> had to stop mail. Well, let me tell you, you just mentioned something with greens. Do you have any um tricks or any secrets to greens? Well, actually, we, that's what one of our sides gonna be for Thanksgiving is greens. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You do you know, cook with a pork bone or do you cook with a grease can on the stove? What do you what do you do? I, I actually I just cook with, with cooking grease with this, you know, I like whatever I I don't really fry chicken, I you know, put it in air frying. But um when you cook you you cooking I, I anything you use grease with. I uh -huh. use that cooking grease uh for us with that's you know, old time. Cooking. That's that's old time right there. That's my mama. She would cook or we had some good old fried chicken. That grease will go in a can, and guess where it was gonna go next? Yeah. In the greens, in the beans. <laughs> I put I put that down first, and I uh, saute my onions and my bell peppers in, in that grease. In the grease. Uh huh. Then, then I add my I, all my seeds and my water into my greens, and then I just add everything. My turkey, and I just add everything together. When they come out, oh my god! Woo! Now, do you do turkey next, or do you do turkey wings? What do you put in there? Turkey wings. I use turkey wings. Yep. In your greens? Yep, in my greens. I use turkey wings where uh, I, I cut them. I cut them up. You know, boil my turkey wings like a stalk. Uh huh. When I put the stock in, I add that stock into with the greens, and then I just the bone the meat and put that meat right on in there. Right. It is amazing. Wait, hold on. This is my husband. Hey, Pasto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, on, look, I'm on T Talk Talk with Bruce, and he's giving me some tips for the greens for Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm sitting right here at the front door. I'm watching for your package. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. He said he want to say hi to you. Hold on a minute. Okay, now you can say hi to Bruce. Hey, Pastor. How are you, Bruce? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. I'm in this kitchen cooking. <laughs> All right, Pastor. He's he's gonna be back at first met. He says he's on his way. You better know it. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye, Pastor. Okay. Sorry, I didn't turn that off, guys. But I, you know, when you got a husband is knows you at home, he, if you don't answer, he'd be like something's happening. And look, you know, my 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 younger daughter is talking about. It. She look, she just walked in. I think she smelled when I'm cooking. If she a, a miles away, she smells. <laughs> You know, she 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 come in. What you cooking? <laughs> you yeah. know, that's my next question. Do do your children take after you? Do you do you have them in the kitchen cooking, or would you rather just be by yourself? No, I I, I tell them to come in here so they can they can understand and, and know how to do stuff. So I ain't got to, to to do everything all the time. I just want sometimes want to relax. Now this one here, she'll call. Uh, daddy, what you know? What going is? What going is? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. She uh -huh. like to cook. Yeah, she, yeah, she like to cook. She don't like to cook for me, but she like to cook. <laughs> Is she pretty good? Yeah, she pretty good. She pretty good. Cause I'm trying to train my grandkids. Um, you know, they they are getting pretty good on some of my recipes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm I'm gonna perfect them every year because I'm wanting to come in one day and sit down and taste my own food and I didn't have to cook it. You see, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, that's what I be talking about. You know, I want to teach y'all how to do this stuff. So I just like, okay, what y'all cooking? Okay, now, yeah, you can smell it, and you know it smells like what you taught her to cook. And you can come in and sit down. That's where we going. So okay, now the next one is the dressing. Tell me about the dressing, cause the dressing is so important at every meal. Listen, if you don't have a dressing for Thanksgiving, right? You might as well pack up. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know people. People, you come into your house and say, like, you don't have no dressing. What do you mean you don't have no dressing? They go somewhere else, won't they? Well, you better know it. Then that's see that's that that's that baked chicken just coming out. Ooh, that looks good. That looks real good. So like I said, this this is something like with, with, with all the stuff we have with this COVID. That was the thing. We just we cook more at home now. So you got baked chicken, cornbread. What else you got over there? I got uh, I got some cabbage over here. Uh oh. Cabbage. Now, do you cook your cabbage the same way you cook your, cook your greens? Same way. I got it. And it's all ready. All this stuff is ready. Oh, 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 oh. Let me see that cabbage. Let me, see. Let me stir this stuff up. Oh, and I got some turkey, I got some turkey uh, wings in here as well. But, in the cabbage? Yeah. Everything, I don't, I don't, we don't eat pork like that in here, in our house, so. You don't, oh, that looks good. Oh my goodness, Oh. Mm. 
Yeah, that was my mother's favorite cabbage. She didn't really like greens that much, but she loved cabbage. Oh my goodness. My, my wife, she called it mother cabbage. She'll eat greens, but she don't eat cabbage. She does, I mean, she would eat it, but we always had cabbage around the house and I don't know why, but that's what she loved and that's what I cooked. And uh, ended up, she would do the sweets. I'm not really good at sweets. That's why around first met people bring me cakes and pies because they know I don't usually cook. So I go to the store and buy something Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Tracy uh, is giving, she already called me and told me she got me some sweet potato pies and, uh, you know, uh, Sister Daniel, she always brings me this wonderful, wonderful pound cake that, wow. uh, you know, that I depend on. People think I make it because it's at my house every year, but no, wow. she's just so sweet. I hope she still does it this year. <laughs> you know, it's well, because I wow. never ask her. She just knows that's supposed to be on my table. Let me help <laughs> Lady O out. Right. But the dressing... Yeah, what about the dressing? I cook the cornbread up and then I just make my make my roux, my dressing with my poison season, my sage. I mix that, that roux up and I get it to my liking, my tasting. Now, and when then, you say roux, uh-oh, pastor's package just came. Hold that right. out. Tell him about something else while I go get this package off the porch because he just called and told me it was coming. Gotcha. So tell him, don't tell him about the dressing because I got to hear yeah. about that when I come back. I'm going to tell them about the dress. I'm going to tell them about this baked chicken over here. Okay, there you go. Because <laughs> I just, you know, I started just being more healthier. So I, I eat a lot of baked food. So baked chicken and baked fish and, uh, and those natures, you know, a lot of seafood. I don't really do pork like that, you know, because blood pressure. So I, I try to keep that on those things to the minimum. But you know, that's just the thing, you know, with Thanksgiving, you just, just trying to cook for your family and then y'all just have that moment because that's what it's all about, just that family time. And that's what Thanksgiving is about. You know, we sit down, we eat, we eat together. And they say that's that good. family that eat together, pray together, we stay together. Wow. You know? And you so, know what? That's one of the things that COVID did for America. It brought the family back into the house where you ate, whether it was a sandwich, people weren't going out to... I'm going over here, I'll go over here. And people started staying in the house and eating together. I know we did more eating at the table together than we had ever done before. Exactly. Because that's the thing, that's, that's one that, that a family have right now. It used to be me, my wife, my youngest daughter uh, here. Now my, my oldest daughter here and then my grandchildren, because it was just us out here in Texas. We didn't have other family out here besides y'all. Mm -hmm. So when we cook, we we just cook, and you know, just for us. They be like, hey, "What y'all cooking all the food for just y'all?" Well, come on over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so and I don't know about you, but I I have a hard time cooking for little people because I have a I had a big family. So when Pastor and I first got married, I I don't know how to cook in that little pot. I just know how to cook in this pot. I know how to cook this kind of roast. And so we'd always have all this food, and he would get upset about it. But I didn't know how to cook for Two people, two people, you know, yeah. and he said, and I don't like to eat leftovers, but guess what? He had to eat leftovers because I couldn't cook for two people unless I he know, wanted to see I me down. That man got to cook tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So tell me about the dressing now. Okay. I'm back. So like I said, I get my roux and stuff together. You know, that's what you, like I said, your nutmeg, your water, eggs, all that. You mix all that together and get your roux together. Your, uh, now, okay. Pork. When you say water, you say roux, are you talking about, uh, What's that stuff they use? Um, um, poultry liquid? Chicken. You know, it's in a little container like a milk you pour it out. What is it called? Chicken broth. Broth, broth. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, your so chicken that, is that part of your roux? Yeah, that's part of my roux. I put it in there because it got that, that, that chicken flavor in there. Okay, so you put the chicken broth. Yep, chicken broth. And then you don't have to, you don't have to do like add, I don't, I don't have to add no sugar, none of that stuff because all the stuff in my cornbread. So uh -huh. when, I make, when I make the roux and stuff, my cornbread is already sweet. Mm -hmm. so I just mix everything up and then pour it over and mix it. And then I stick it in the oven. I know some people like dry, that that, that real dry dressing. Now, my dry my dressing be moist. You know, Me I, too. I don't like no dry dressing. No crumbly <laughs> like, uh-uh. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me show you how I do this real quick. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Or even the, the people say dressing and you go to the house and they got stuffing. Yeah, no. It's I just dressing. not dressing. I make I make the cornbread like I just made it, and then I just I crunch it. 
You know what I'm saying? I smash it up. Yeah, crumble it up. Uh -huh. And then you add your, your, your chicken broth and your eggs and your portrait season, all your ruler stuff to it. And then you just mix it. Yeah. You know what I tell my grandkids? And <laughs> you'll understand this though. Well, the first thing I do, you know, when I'm doing my dressing, I make sure that my nails are cleaned out. I don't wear any jewelry. I mean, I'm my, no nail polish. You know, my hands are really, really clean mm -hmm. because I tell my kids, I said, the dressing and I have to talk. We have to communicate. It's like we have this relationship. So they said, how do you know when the dress is ready? I said, when it starts feeling a certain way to my hands. He said, mom, this is not, this don't sound too good the way you talk about this dressing. Right. But do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, and that's how I am. You know, with everything I cook, I just, how you know it's ready? Or how, because my hands tell me or my nose tell me, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. You don't understand like when you fry chicken, the chicken talks to you. Yeah, when you yeah. First, when you first put it in the grease, it's real loud. And it's then it's done, yeah. you don't hear nothing. <laughs> it's silent. So people be like, I never paid attention to that. I'm like, yeah, it talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> it talked to you, it's telling you it's done. It's real quiet. It don't sound like when you first dropped it in the grease. Yeah. It's, it's quiet. And it's floating to the top. And now you know you got some good crispy chicken. Now, you know, that's one thing I don't do too much of. I, when I was growing up, my mother, one of the things we had to learn how to do is how to cut up a chicken. Okay. You know, people today, they don't know how to cut up a chicken, but I do know how to cut up a chicken because that's what I would do on Sundays. My mom said, cut up that chicken and then season it with the salt and pepper. Then she would come back and put her seasoning on it. And uh, do you have a secret for fried chicken? Do you dip it in buttermilk or and then back in the flour, back and forth? What's your, what's your secret well, of good have, fried chicken? I make, okay, I make this, 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 this called egg wash. Okay. Know? It's like egg wash. So I, I make that up and I make it like a real creamy uh, type of egg wash. And then- Is that like I, milk and eggs? Yeah, like milk and eggs. It's like okay. egg. I don't know milk. what egg wash is. Okay, milk and eggs, okay. Milk and eggs. And then you just make it, you make it like a real creamy. Uh -huh. You don't want it too runny or you don't want it too thick. And right. then, I, you know, my season, I don't, I don't put like flour and stuff like that. I put like a, a season, a chicken season. And uh -huh. then I get it from the, the egg wash to the seasoning and then shake it and then dip it in the grease. And when, uh, I, when it come out, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, wait a minute now, wait, wait, wait. When you put the flour on there, you say, okay, you put it go. I don't use any flour. Get out of here. You put, wait a minute, you go to the egg wash, to the seasoning, to the to the uh, skillet. And how long you froze? Can't hear you. Hold I still on, can't hear you. Oh, there it is. Okay, go ahead. Say it again now. Okay. Okay, there you go. You back. So you okay? So I was saying that you go from the egg wa wash mm -hmm. to the seasonings and straight to oil. Straight to oil. Where do you the, get your crunchy, crunchy crust and stuff from? The the egg wash itself is going to give you that 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 crust, and then the. Uh, the uh the, your season is going to have it on there so i don't i don't stir my chicken or anything until it have it forms that crust on there a lot of people stir their chicken and that's how they knock the crust off of it oh um, after i dip it in egg wash dip it in the uh the seasoning dip it in oil i let it cook for like seven to seven to ten minutes mm -hmm. it, it comes to get that that battle on there and then right. I, I start stirring my chicken up because i don't flip want no doubt flip it yeah over. you flip it okay yeah. Huh. See, but thinking, I don't. I, I fry chicken in a big pot. I got like, you know, me do the cake. I got big old things. You know, I don't. So you I don't dip, drop it in a whole bunch of grease. Oh, a whole bunch. Oh, yeah. I uh -huh. drop like that. I, I cook. I cook twenty pieces of chicken at one time. <laughs> okay, that's what you mean by stirring. Because I was like, how you stirring the skillet? But it's a big pot of oil that you dropped it off in there. Yeah, just drop it off in there. It's like how I fry my turkey. You know, I do the chicken the same way. Wow. Yep. Okay, we got a few more minutes, and you just uh, mentioned the next one is a fried turkey. Now, I'm going to tell you the best fried turkey I ever had, and this guy bought me this one fried turkey. I haven't seen him since. I wish I knew where he was, but he put jalapenos mm. underneath the skin and onions and garlic underneath the skin, and he, so do you have any tips for fried turkeys? Well, I, I see, I'm not really a, a big 
uh, spicy person. So I just mm -hmm. I season my turkey real good. Just season it down. Just rub it down. Rub it down. Like you do a chicken. Are you you say you rubbing it into the, to the chick turkey? Yeah, I just rub my season to the turkey. I, actually, I use margarine first. I rub rub the turkey with margarine, and mm -hmm. then I rub that seasoning into that margarine. Just rubbing it to the turkey. Mm -hmm. Let it drop in oil. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, do you it, use like a Cajun seasoning or something to, for the turkey to make it have that? We start we start some new season. I don't know if I don't know if anybody's familiar with it, but it's called uh, slap your mama. Oh yeah, slap your mama. Mm -hmm. slap your mama. Hey, <laughs> I don't know about slap my mama, but I know this season here. <laughs> I'll tell you, it is it, it is amazing. a little attitude, huh? Like you might want to think you might want to, but you know you bet not. <laughs> My daughter told me about this uh, when I was in Arizona, and I uh -huh. never, I never even heard of it. I'm like, do Texas even sell it? Yeah. You know? but, but they sell it. So I, I was, you know, this is a really good season. So. But you put on your turkey. And yeah. my grandson is the one that had us buying it up, and they wanted to put it on corn on the cob when they were living with here with this. Nana, you don't have no slap your mama? I said, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you better watch yourself. <laughs> I slap, got your slap, all right. I got, but, I got corn cob, I got corn cob over there too. So I might try that. Tell your grandson, I'm it on there. I tried it and it was good. I was like, oh my goodness. So they love corn on the cob. I cooked it, put my little butter on there, and they put that slap your mama on there, and they were tearing it up. Oh my goodness. Try it. They, it was really good. I would, I would have fixed a plate, but I know you know what I'm saying. No, I'm no, sure. no, don't do that in front of me. Not, you know, I'm gonna do it in front I had to bring your plate there. You gotta bring your, look here, because that's not nice. My mom used to always say, you don't eat in front of your, in front of your company unless you're gonna offer them something. So we wouldn't let our company come to our house when it was dinner time because we knew we had to offer them some of our food. And right. if we offered them some of ours, my mom would say, okay, give them half of your plate. There you go. <laughs> I'm not wanting to give up half of my plate, so. Okay, so I guess the only other thing that people are doing now, they're doing uh, Thanksgiving different. Some do Italian Thanksgiving. Some people are doing gumbo. Do you do you do gumbo? Yeah, uh, I haven't made gumbo yet myself personally. I'm, I'm so just like different dishes. I haven't tried gumbo, but it's, it's something that I want to try. Um, yeah, you know, I, I learned I, how to make it last year or year before last. Oh, wow. um, and uh, one of my friends that came over from Louisiana, New Orleans, uh -oh. and she said, let me come over and show you how to make it. Oh, Lord, it's expensive. Yeah. And it takes, uh, oh, my hours to make yeah. it uh, almost a half a day. So I can understand why they don't want to bring a big pot to an event to, you know, let people kind of go in. It's got to be a special, special time that you fix gumbo. Yeah, so you do it. Maybe you got seafood in it. Ooh. Yes, I love seafood. Me too. So what is your favorite dish? One I haven't mentioned yet. We got some more minutes. What is, what is something that everybody loves for you to make around the house or are you your specialty? Mac and cheese. Oh, Every, wow. everybody, here, everybody in my house eat mac and cheese. I don't know what it is about macaroni and cheese, but this is one of my favorite dishes uh, that I like to make for my family because they enjoy it. And I can make macaroni and cheese today and you can have it to Thursday, and it's yeah. still made the same day. Wow. That's well, let me ask you this one, too, because this is one of my mothers that I, I, I hate oh, I didn't make the recipes. I was trying to eat so much, I didn't want, I wasn't learning a lot about her desserts because I've made all the other things, but peach cobbler. That, that look, that what she just said, you know, peach cobbler. Uh huh. hey! <laughs> That was you just said, peach, peach cobbler, you know, that's peach one. Cobbler, peach cobbler. Tell me about that, tell me about that peach cobbler. Oh, it's a bomb. Big, <laughs> big peaches, cinnamon, and a crust. Oh, yes. Crispy. Yeah. <laughs> and brown. <laughs> so this, this, this crust right here is amazing. You yeah. can it's amazing. So uh, do you cook it on top of the stove, or how do you cook it? In the oven. In the oven. We um we roll this out like I said just like like we do the pie we'll roll this out the crust and we'll put it in the oven bake it first and then we'll put the peaches on top of here and then we'll use the same crust and then we'll we'll cut it like like just out here and uh -huh. we'll, lay, we'll lay it across and then put that sugar and cinnamon on top of it mm -hmm. put it in the oven and just yeah. so do the 
peaches cook? Do you put the foil on it like you did the sweet potatoes? No, I don't put the foil on it. Yeah, no, no foil. Yeah, because you want to have, if you put the foil on top of that crust, it's going to make it moist. Okay. So you don't want, you don't want, you don't want I know, I like, I hate gummy peach. Ugh. I really do. I don't like gummy peach cobbler. Oh my goodness. I threw some away the other day, passed about me some from a very famous place. And I'm like, this is too gummy. All this gummy stuff, I can't stand it. Right. So, <laughs> now brag on your wife. What is, what does she cook that's like uh the best, the bomb? What brag on your wife, because I know she can cook too. Her, her spaghetti. That's one thing I can say with her. That spaghetti. She got it, huh? Well, she got it. She got it down pack. I don't know what she even stole sometimes from somebody uh, Italian recipe, but <laughs> Is that yes. like your secret recipe? Oh my God. <laughs> no, I had nothing, nothing uh, special to it, really. I don't think. <laughs> I just well, think, uh, it's the love. Yeah. Because yeah. when I tell you that, that spaghetti, I literally be licking the bowl when it's, yeah, baby, uh, ain't no more. <laughs> I know. Well, you know what? I, I, I think it, I know it is a special way you fix it. Because I have a special way I fix mine too. And uh, one of the church members' kids came to my house one Sunday and uh, with my grandchild and they said, Lady O makes the best spaghetti. I've never had spaghetti like that. And I was trying to think about what do I did I do it was different. But one thing I don't like, I don't like dry spaghetti. I can't stand where there's no sauce in there. And I do put cheese in there, shredded cheese. And I also put salsa. Mm. Yeah. To give it a little bit of a kick. Everything I cook has to have like a little kick. Pastor says, he thinks I'm part Spanish. <laughs> if it ain't got no kick to it, <laughs> I had to do with it. Do, like I say with, with her, I, I, I said I really don't eat spicy stuff, but I started getting jalapeno pepper after she's cooking because she don't know she ain't gonna do it. But I put like a couple of jalapeno peppers on top of it, just cut it up. I don't know. It's, it, it, you're right. It, it gives that that flavor. Yeah. You know, but. It's every now and then. I don't have to have it all the time, but every now and then, I, I like the spaghetti just the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, good, good, good. Well, listen, I have really, really enjoyed talking with you guys and visiting with you in your kitchen and your home. Thank you for inviting us in. And uh, we just pray that you all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Just relax. I know you've been doing a lot of traveling and you need to be with your family. And um, we just appreciate you sharing with us uh, your time and some tips uh, with the Tea Talk group here. And anytime. Uh, anytime. And, and so we look forward to seeing you back at First Met. Both of y'all, We the culinary department is going to be, when are we going to be open again? Uh, let's, let's make it happen. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I don't have anything planned to go out of town. So I'm here this Sunday. So y'all see me on Sunday. Okay. Day. Okay. We're going to see you Sunday because I'm looking forward to it. I've been really missing that. And uh, I know it's uh, been a, a challenge too with COVID that yeah. you can't do things the way you used to and so forth and, and uh, had to be really careful with, with that. But we, we've got to get back um, with a safe way to be able to bring back the love through cooking, which is what I believe Thanksgiving does. You know, if you didn't have a cooking, it wouldn't be Thanksgiving. It's like, wow. you, right, you got to be up in the kitchen and cooking and busy preparing um, this meal that's full of love that you give from your heart to them. And then you see them enjoy it. And that makes you feel so much happier. And to me, being thankful for what God has given you and being thankful for the food that you have been able to prepare for your family and they're enjoying it is what Thanksgiving is all about. Amen. So thank you all so much for, for uh, letting us in your kitchen. And we look forward to seeing you again at First Met. Sounds sound good. See you Sunday. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. That's all for now. Thank you for joining Tea Talk with Lady O. We'll see you next Sunday at 3 for Tea with Lady O. There you go.